And we have from Karate Sleepover, none other than the famous, famous, funny comedian, Damon, Damien Stokes. Damien Stokes. Just met him for the first time today. Nice to meet you, brother. Me too. I gotta say, I have never seen Game of Thrones. Really? Yeah. What kind of TV shows are you into? Uh, I don't know. Right now, I'm rewatching Sherlock. That was That's a good one. one. It is. Uh, That's a good one. Did you like, uh, oh, Doctor, Mister, Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, the movie, Marvel, the movie, Doctor yeah. Strange. Did you like Doctor Strange? I haven't seen that one yet. If you like that actor, uh, what's the actor's name? Uh, Cumberbatch. What's uh, yeah. his first name? I don't know. Cumbersnatch. Yeah, that one. Benedict Cumbersnatch. Cumbersnatch. Yeah. yeah. If you like Benedict yeah. Cumbersnatch. You probably like uh, <laughs> Doctor Strange. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, here's a little thing about Game of Thrones. If you're into medieval shit, are you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Lord of the Rings? Oh, yeah. It's like Lord of the Rings at the strip club, basically. You, I'm it, all about it. Okay. Yeah. You should definitely check oh, yeah. it out. If you took Lord of the Rings to the strip club with, like, drugs and dragons, that's that's Game of Thrones. So That sounds like a pretty good time. I'd love to check that out. I'm sorry if I just ruined the whole series for <laughs> you while you're standing over there. But, you know, we've already said our piece about Game of Thrones. Let's talk about you, Damien. Karate Sleepover. Who had the idea? Where did it come about? Uh, we're pretty much a collective. Uh, I took a few guys that had been at open mics uh, about a month and a half ago. I talked to them about just forming up as a group and... Some of them had already been doing sketch, and uh, Paul was really big into improv, but we were all doing the stand-up thing, and I talked about working together, and I was probably like a week and a half later, we decided that uh, Karate Sleepover was the name, and Paul got a hold of uh, Justin over at the queue, and we booked a show for Lucy Fest. Uh, oh, nice. So, yeah, uh, August 5th, 10 p.m., we're going to be at Lucy Fest. Say it again, right into the camera. August 5th, 10 p.m., Lucy Fest, uh, $10 tickets. Uh, right there at the queue. Uh, Going to be a great time. Cool, man. That's awesome. And uh, Karate Sleepover, who came up with the name and how did you guys decide that, yeah, that's the one? Um, we honestly just couldn't decide on a name, and that was one of the suggestions. So we all finally decided we wanted to get booked at some point. So we just decided, <laughs> yeah, we'll just take Karate Sleepover. All right. And honestly, could have been just about anything at that point. We were just sick of looking for a name so is there any story behind it any thought any uh what what's it mean to you i guess uh just something fun uh youthful just playing around uh we can make some pretty sweet logos off it nice no <laughs> doubt logos are fun <laughs> uh, did you want a beer man oh no i'm good thank you. okay cool so you guys basically do skits or or uh, how's how's it work when you get together? Uh, What's the product going to look like on uh, what was that date again? August fifth. August fifth. August fifth. Um, we've got a few sketches on YouTube now. Uh, our channel is just Karate Sleepover. Um, mostly they're more commercial based on the show coming up on the fifth. We have one we're editing right now. It's a real good skit. Um, it should be a, a hit. It's based on superheroes and. And the dynamic of roommates, it's, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Don't give away too much, yeah. but that sounds good. Yeah. That sounds good, man. Um, other than that, we just kind of been working on our sets for the show coming up. Uh, we have some more sketches in the works, some that we're just writing out and getting down the base for. But uh, we're also working, some of us are working on the improv scene a little bit. Um, where do you guys like to, uh, where out in the public? Do you guys like to work out your stuff? Where's a good place that you guys get together perform for a crowd? Um, Thursday nights at the Q, we do an open mic. Uh, myself and Andrew Young, another member of uh, Karate Sleepover, we host at the Bear Brick in Little Valley on Tuesday nights. Okay. Um, uh, we usually get, we share a lot of the same people. So there's not a lot of comedians in the area until you get up to like Buffalo. So we get four or five guys from Jamestown that drive out to Little Valley, and we get some from Salamanca and Little Valley drive all the way out to Jamestown on Thursdays. and just kind of work our material together. Um, Everybody likes to uh, work together. It's kind of like a close-knit group. Oh, yeah. It's not like competition or caddy shit. No, no. We're, uh, eh, once in a while, there's a little conflict. but So who's on your shit list? I can't say. <laughs> you know he's got somebody. You can just see it hiding behind those eyes. There's definitely somebody on his shit list. Uh, 
We'll, we'll stay politically correct on that one. All right, damn. We're always looking for the dirt. That's well, cool. Even the people on the shit list, though. I mean, it's a small scene. I still invite everybody to come out to the yeah. open mic, even the one I host. I'm, I'm never going to tell anyone they can't show up. Even people I find not particularly funny or just <laughs> offensive. I mean, we... Everyone stays within their limits for the most part. Cool. That's good, man, that you keep it open like that. Positive vibes go a long way. So, when did you start getting into this stuff, man? And what brought you into, like, you know what? I'm going to be, I'm going to go for this. I'm going to do it. Uh, actually, it was only April, maybe, that I started. I was going, driving all the way up to Buffalo. Uh, Andy started out going up, and I was going up with him. Uh, he's got, like, one show in more than I do as far as open mics. And then... Uh, it was it was hell trying to drive to Buffalo once a week, finding the time to drive all the way up there for like five minutes of mic time to drive all the way back, and there was no way of getting up there more than once a week. So uh, we decided to get a hold of Brandy over at the Bear Brick about using their venue, and we just started hosting, which we got in a slew of shit from from the, the Buffalo comedians are not fans of uh, not earning your spot as a host, so I don't think they like us so much at this point. Well, just because yeah. we didn't earn it, it was out of necessity. I, there was no way we were driving all that way and earning anything. It was kind of, we're starting it. Well, you know, that's that's actually good, because, and I'm going to tell you why it's good. Because if you have people who are established, throwing vibes at you, whether they're good or bad, they notice. Yeah. And haters can hate all they want, but in the end, you do what you got to do. So anybody that says, well, you got to do, you're not, make your own path. I love that. I can, I can dig that shit, man. That's pretty much where we're at. And that's where the detractors are coming from, or you guys don't have enough time, and why are you doing a show? It's like, well, because we booked a show. We're just out hustling. I mean, you, you could have done it. Out so. hustling is, is pretty much April, May, April, we'll count April, April, May, June, July, four months. You've gone from, I'm going to start trying to do this shit, coming up with material, Driving out to Buffalo, fuck it, I'm going to host my own stuff, and now you got your own troupe that's going to play at the Lucy Fest in yeah. four months. Yeah, most of that's come in the last month, really. I mean, it's been maybe five or six weeks. I contacted the guys, uh, Jim Drain, Mike Barrick, Paul Clemente, James Town, James Town's own, uh, myself and Andrew Young. Uh, that's a collective of karate sleepover. Um, I think between all of us, I think we had maybe ten years' experience in stand-up, and that was with a few years off in between. But... Uh, Real talented guys, real funny guys. Cool, man. And um, so you have a YouTube page, did you say? Uh, yeah, we're just at Karate Sleepover. You go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com backslash karate sleepover. Uh, we got our sketches linked up there. Um, More first, to come? Oh, yeah, definitely. Hopefully by the end of the week we'll have our, our big first one up. Okay. Well, who's some of the comedians that influenced you personally, man? Uh, I like Louis C.K. a lot. Um, you watch the show? I I did I watched some of Louie. I didn't watch all of it, I don't think. But uh big into his stand up specials. Uh he's the most notable one as far as it goes. Like Berbiglia. Um I can't think of too many more right off the top right now. I try not to watch too much stand up now because I don't want to accidentally steal stuff from their sets. I, yeah. I don't listen to much music. I don't listen to much popular music because I just want, you know, folks on my own shit. So I understand that dude. Yeah. Uh, aside from things that, you know, you personally just don't want to talk about, but something that, you know, something that you can share with us, what was your most embarrassing moment as a kid? Because it's the moments like that, that build you into the type of character that does stand up. It's the, it's the embarrassment. It's the, it's the fucked up shit that happens to you. So as a kid, like maybe what, what's a, what's an incident you, you, have in your mind buried or at the forefront that really you know ooh turned your face red and you're like shit if I can go through this I can I can do a lot of things. Oh man, I had a lot of embarrassing moments as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we all? <laughs> um, maybe the most embarrassing that I can remember that's okay for this. I had a crush on a girl and I made the mistake of telling my mom. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So she went and told her mom, and that's how I found out was when I came back through the school, because her mom told her, and then she told all her friends. And so everybody at the school knew your secret before you knew it wasn't a secret. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. That's Game of Thrones shit, Joint, where your parents just want to join houses, you know, and the kids... 
<laughs> kids don't really have a say in it. Yeah. So well, thanks, mom. <laughs> Shout out to your mom. What's up, mom? <laughs> She'll never see this. No. no. Hey, never say never. <laughs> she might be a huge fan of one, two, three. It's the podcast. <laughs> if not, you will be. Give us some time. But uh, would you ever be interested in like mixing a comedy slash music show? I've heard horror stories about it, but I'm down for any shows right now. Uh, that's one of the big things that a lot of comedians tell you is not to do a set in between music mm-hmm. because everyone gets up and leaves because they're there for the music. Right. But I've heard about sometimes it goes great. I'm down for it. We were talking about doing that not too long ago, and that deal kind of fell through, but yeah, I'm down. I got to say, I was recently at a, a show out in uh, Rochester, and it was a band I like, and they had uh, a puppet a uh, ventriloquist, uh, and it was not well received. You know, everybody wants the music, like you yeah. said. They're not there to see this guy do his ventriloquist act. You know That's what I mean? Good. Uh, so I, I follow what you're saying on that. I was thinking more along the lines of one of our shows, and we only have 15 people that come to our shows anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not like they're going to be like, Boo, I tripped the dudes! They're going to be like, hey, well, this is a welcome change. <laughs> one of those guys. This is Sleepover. That's my shit. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Maybe we'll put that together sometime. Have have one and then the other instead of mixing it up, you know? So yeah, I'm down for we'll time that. I can't wait to see your guys' stuff. We were gonna we were gonna try to talk Damien into performing today, but the the Lucy Fest is right around the corner and he wants to keep that primo shit sealed up for you guys, so you better go check it, alright? Because it's been boiling and it's bubbling up to the surface and when it's time to come out, baby it's probably coming out, huh? Oh yeah. Anything else you want to tell the people before uh, you head off? Uh, I don't think so. Just August 5th at the Q, uh, 10 p.m. Rob Wills, our host. You'll remember him from Wits and Giggles. He hosts Wits and Giggles. Uh, local comedian has been doing it for eight, nine years, I think. Um, and it's myself, Andrew Young, Paul Clemente, and Jim Drain. Uh, Mike Barrick's in the group, but he's going to be out of town. He decided that... Uh, Seeing Dropkick Murphys was more important. Wow. <laughs> He's I, the Joel of your group. I, He's the Joel of your group. I gotta say, if I had tickets, I probably would have chose that, too. <laughs> I've heard my jokes. <laughs> so. He took his girlfriend instead of you. You're a little bitter. Yeah. Fuck. What are you gonna do? Well, Damien, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, check out Karate Sleepover at the Lucy Fest and at the Q sometimes. And check out their page, Keeping Tabs, alright? Thanks, man. We're gonna reconfigure. We'll be right back.